Hey, Hello. Facebook world. How are you? Uh, Alex and Stephen Kendrick here in Albany, Georgia. We wanted to give you some updates real quick uh, in this crazy time. Alex, it's been crazy. Yeah, uh, well, but it's great for family time. We've uh, basically been just home all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's right. In fact, all the time. Uh, we need to ask our homeschooling friends, you know, Alex, Alex and I both homeschooled, ask our homeschooling friends, how did you do it? Because we're going back to a homeschooling schedule now where the kids have school times, chore times, fun time, hangout time, free time uh, in order to function. But it's been a good thing. It, it has been a good thing. We, we did a uh, family worship service the other night that was really, really good. Uh, we sat around, sang, and uh, worshiped the Lord and, and kind of did our own church. Uh, our church is streaming our services, so we're not meeting live in the building, but uh, as a family, it's it's been a good thing. You know, I hope that uh, all of you guys are enjoying spending some quality time with family. I hope it's quality time. Well, at the same time, though, we all, we're all we all watching what's going on in the news. I've been yeah. tracking the coronavirus and watching the numbers go up internationally. Uh, at the same time, we're grieved and our hearts are going out to people that are losing jobs, 150,000 people being laid off. Uh, they said in Michigan, the auto industry, uh, hotels, there's a whole lot of people that are in a crisis and in a panic right now. And uh, for us as believers in Jesus Christ, uh, it is so important to go back to the promises of God during this time. I've been thinking about Psalm 103, uh, 19. The Lord is sovereign on his throne. Uh, he, it says he has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty uh, rules over all. Right. Uh, that God is working all things together for good to those that love the Lord who are called according to his purpose. And so I know a lot of people are asking the question, Lord, what are you doing and what is going on? And at the same time, he is unchanging. He's doing what he always has been doing. That is bringing glory to his name among the nations, humbling the proud, uh, giving us cause to repent of our sins, to seek his face, to draw closer to him. The scripture says, draw nigh unto me, I will draw nigh unto you, says the Lord. And then I thought about 2 Chronicles 7.14. We've been quoting that verse, praying that verse, saying yeah. we need to pray for revival. And at the end of War Room, Alex, we put this verse up on the screen. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now that's verse 14. Listen to verse 13 before that. He says, when I shut up the heavens yeah. so that there's no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send disease among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Right now, it's been interesting. I'm seeing all these ministries and churches from across the nation calling people back to prayer. Yeah. I just got a big, long email from Campus Crusade for Christ, actually crew now, and saying, here's how you can be praying. Uh, there's a new ministry called America Praise that's cranking up 24-hour prayer uh, and, and trying to call the nations back to prayer in every city. And each of us in our own lives, I know I've been getting up earlier and spending more time with the Lord in my own personal life. So. Because, because we can, we have this opportunity. You know, it's no fun to be inconvenienced the way our entire country and other countries are being inconvenienced. But really, that's not even the point. So the point is, what would the Lord call us to do during these seasons, and That's how right. can we honor him? So we want to encourage you to be prayerful and careful, but not fearful. That's exactly right. So, um, and that's what we're trying to do. So we are enjoying extra time with families. We are getting some things done that we wanted to get done for some time. Uh, you know, we had to put a halt on our own production schedule, mm -hmm. and uh, we were planning to shoot a movie here uh, very, very soon, and we've had to put a halt on that until we hear word that it's okay to proceed. So That's right. uh, God's on the mm -hmm. throne. He's never been off the throne, so we're going to trust him and uh, take advantage of this time and seek him and ask him uh, if there's anything that he wants us to be doing in our hearts mm. or in the life of our country and our church, and to be very strategically prayerful. So our friend Jeremy Carlson, who is a part of our promotional team on um, on uh, Overcomer, and then was also helping uh, our friends, the Irwins, with I Still Believe, uh, he got the coronavirus. He's been posting, please pray for me. But he said, I've been separated from my families, but I'm okay. And, and you know, God's bringing good out of this situation. 
And uh, it's interesting because last week, we're, the, all this week, we were supposed to be at the Christian Worldview Film right, Festival in right, Nashville. Yeah. And after a year of preparation for that event, that got shut down. Uh, we've been working on three different film projects, and now we're discussing today how those may, may need to get pushed into the fall or next year. Yeah. Uh, we're dealing with uh, Albany, Georgia, our local city, where the coronavirus has hit our local hospital. It's been spreading around there. Our own father, we were praying last night for him because he came up with a fever, and uh, this this morning it broke, and uh, we don't think he has the coronavirus, no. praise the Lord, yeah. but we've been praying for him at the same time. So um, I've been thinking about this, Alex. I've been thinking all these things I've been praying for. I've been asking God to help me spend more time in his word, more time in prayer, to lose weight and exercise, to, to read more, to spend more time on my marriage with my kids, to help me get caught up around the house, to free me up of stuff I don't need to be doing. And suddenly all of these prayers are getting answered yeah. simultaneously. And um, so we're, we want to we want to encourage you with some scriptures, some good news, and, uh, and also have a prayer time at the end of this Facebook Live. But first, we want to pull in our friend, Andy Irwin, and we're going to do some cutting-edge technology here, folks. Yeah, Because we yeah. got Andy on FaceTime. Are you ready? Come on. There, there he is. is. There he is. There's Andy right here, man. Andy, what's up? <laughs> I, 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 I thought they gave you guys better budgets these days. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. That's right. And, uh, and you know, we we like this better. better. This is more fun. <laughs> back what? to our roots, huh? Back yeah, to our roots. that's we're right. All the way back to Flywheel here. Well, listen, Andy, uh, we just saw I Still Believe in Theaters a few days ago. Now they're shutting theaters down. But we know God has already been working with this film. It's a great film. Mm -hmm. I've seen it twice. And, I've seen uh, it twice. And we want to know what's going on with the film and any anything really you want to say about it. Yeah, guys. Man, it's such a privilege to be with you. And, I, you know, I, I, I echo your sentiments. I know that how hard that uh, the coronavirus has hit. Albany in particular, and, you know, John and I have been trying to keep up with the headlines and what's going on, and, and I think, you know, it's been a whirlwind where just in the past, you know, four or five days in particular, you know, the world has really changed a lot, and, mm -hmm. you know, we've been trying to wrap our heads around it, so we were in the middle of releasing the film the, uh, the weekend that this all broke, uh, and really kind of hit an escalated timeline here in the U.S., and, you know, at first, uh, uh, it just took us a second to kind of catch up and catch our breath uh, to see what God has, has done in the theaters already of, of people that still showed up uh, was pretty amazing. Um, you know, we had a, 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 an amazing opening weekend uh, where uh, we were up against uh, the Pixar movie Onward and, and several other new releases, and uh, we came within a, a million dollars of, of tying um, Onward. And I think that, you know, the message of hope and Jeremy's story uh, and the, how he got through his darkest moments of life uh, really, I think, resonated with people that are really craving the hope of the gospel right now. And so uh, we've just been trying to be sensitive to, okay, God, you know, I, I told Mandy in the middle of it, I just said, my wife, I just said, I feel like there's a bigger picture going on right now than, mm -hmm. than our film. And God is at work in people's hearts uh, through circumstances that that are happening, uh, that he's allowing us to be a part of, uh, of that, of that message of, of hope that it's an invitation, uh, of people to find hope in Christ. And, um, I'm, I'm glad to be a part of that. And I feel a lot of peace that there's a bigger thing going on here. So it's been a wild ride for sure. Uh, it just seems surreal. If you were to tell me two weeks ago that this was the scenario going to play out. I would oh, have man. told you you're watching a science fiction movie. That's right. Yeah. It, it feels like the Twilight Zone. So, yeah. so uh, you know, we want to see it again. How can people who haven't yet seen this, what what do they need to do? Yeah, it, you know, the exciting thing is, is um, uh, you know, we were trying to figure out exactly what to do uh, because we were going to stay in theaters uh, long term, but then the theaters just started shutting down, and, and obviously the same as you guys, our hearts are with the theatrical experience. We feel like mm -hmm. there's something really special that happens in a theater when we can watch things together. Uh, but that being said, uh, uh, with the theaters closing down, we didn't really have that option anymore for right now, and so I uh, just announced about five minutes ago, it hit the, the press uh, releases that that uh, we're releasing it early on video demand, uh, digitally, 
uh, next Friday, so the 27th. It will be out everywhere. Movies awesome. are, are, are sold, rented. Uh, you know, Apple, Amazon, uh, you know, uh, uh, the cable providers. And so you'll be able to see it early there. Usually that would happen about 12 weeks after the theatrical experience. But uh, Lionsgate was able to work out a deal for that to come early. Awesome. Forever. Okay. So we're really excited. Okay. And, and this is why this is important. You know, th- there's no way anybody could have foreseen um, could have foreseen what's what's happening right now. So... We love the fact that the movie will soon be available to everybody that wants to see it. So we're grateful that Lionsgate is going to make it available. If you haven't seen this film, you got to check it out. Again, I've seen it twice. We'll see it again. Yeah, and so so let's talk about that for a second. It's an A Cinema score, which is yeah. very hard to get, which is fantastic. And 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 Andy, you know about this. Our Rotten Tomato scores on our movies, there's this giant gap between the reviewers and the real audience that we made the movie for. And right now, uh, a 98% Rotten Tomatoes audience score is fantastic yes, for a it film. Yes, is. Yes, so it is. So congratulations on that. That's really what we're going for is that score. Yeah, well, Walt, Walt Disney said, I'll take my chances with the audience over the critics every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's and fantastic. So, uh, you know, you know the, the part about it is, I, you know, I feel like uh, across the board, the filmmaking experience is getting stronger and stronger and better and better i think that's yes. shown in y'all's work it's shown in you know a lot of our other friends work and then and i think we've tried to be part of that equation that we're all trying to grow in our crafts to allow the the gospel to have the biggest platform possible uh that being said uh the the, the gospel being presented and the idea of the need of forgiveness uh or the redemption from from our sin is always going to be offense to people that don't want to hear it and so sure. you can't can't really get past that part you know i saw one review that said uh the irwins have gotten better as filmmakers but they're still cloaking uh, a secret agenda and so <laughs> well, who said it was secret <laughs> yeah it's not a secret it's like we tell people about jesus but um, yeah. uh, best news but ever that, that that being said um uh you know i think the fact that the audience is re- you know really connected with it and to get a 98 percent audience uh score is really Speaking of assessment, there's a hunger for product like this out there. And I think then what it creates is it creates enough of a buzz that the fear of missing out kicks in. And then a a general movie market will check it out, uh, hopefully now on on video demand and different things like that, where they can say, what is this movie? And then that's the opportunity to be a Trojan horse of the gospel. Exactly. And I think what what you guys encouraged us to do long ago was to find our voice and what, what God's called us to do. And we feel like what God's called us to do is evangelism is putting uh, true stories in that, that show the power of the gospel making a change in somebody's life. And that creates an opportunity for people outside the church walls to have that first experience with Christianity and with the good news of the gospel. And it allows them to go ask questions and then allows the church to step in and say, let's tell you the rest of the story. That's so, right. Uh, so there's been multiple opportunities for that that I'd love to share hey, with you guys. Yeah, I want I want you to talk a l- real quick about the LA Times article because we pulled yeah. up some screenshots of that. Tell everybody what happened with that. Yeah, so this was really cool. So, you know, uh, when we cast Jeremy uh, Camp in this movie, we needed somebody that, that could bring uh, some star appeal to it. And so when KJ Appa signed on uh, for the TV show Riverdale, uh, uh, he was raised in a strong Christian household in New Zealand. His dad... Uh, was very involved in, in the, the church there, uh, the, Samoan, uh, the Samoan church. And, um, and so when he signed on, it created this buzz, uh, mainstream buzz for the film. And so the LA Times did a big uh, cover story for the calendar section of their paper, I believe it was on Monday. That's and right. I read it, and uh, it was a great, very favorable article. In fact, I even emailed the, the writer just to say thank you for the fair and balanced reporting. Uh, but at the at the end, they kind of added a little blurb that I thought was really interesting. Towards the end of the second page, it says, um, uh, uh, "It says uh, I still believe does not stray from its religious messaging." During his concerts, Apple's character asks fans to pray over his ailing fiance, played by Britt Robertson. And the end of the film, the, it points viewers to a website where they can have a conversation about hope and faith. Uh, God created you to be in a perfect relationship yes. with Him. But our sins uh, fracture that relationship and separate us from him. Reads the message on the homepage of chataboutfaith.com. We can only be forgiven and reconciled uh, back to God through a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ. Uh, We want you to help you learn more about what he has done for you and how 
he wants you to have that part of uh, be part of your life. <laughs> camp, camp, camp. <laughs> this is the L.A. Times exposing yeah. your secret agenda and at the same time sharing the gospel. I know. So Camp spent uh, the majority of the eight week shoot on set in Alabama. Said he hopes the movie will lead non believers towards Christianity. I'm not going to shy away from that at all, said the Grammy-nominated musician. Mm. Uh, I went through a really hard time, and how I got through that was my faith in Jesus. So if someone is going through a rough time and sees how I did it, I want to encourage them uh, to find that hope in Jesus that I did. Absolutely, that's not a question. If you want to know my goal, I want people to say, I want to know more about what he ran to. That's exactly right. That is so So, incredible, man. That is so incredible. I I texted Jeremy as soon as I read that. I said, Jeremy, uh, the LA Times just shared the gospel uh, in your own words, bro. That's right. uh, (laughs) That was fantastic. Praise the Lord. Well, hey, uh, listen, uh, we love you guys. We're proud of you guys. And, uh, Keep doing what you're doing. We're going to encourage people to begin streaming it as soon as it's available and uh, watch it, buy it, share it with some other people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and and we, we, we're we rooting you on, man. Hey, and, uh, yeah, and let hey. me mention something this to, to the, the people that are out there. The Irwins came from the professional side. Alex and I came from the ministry side. So we're always... You know, we're we're learning from them all the time on what camera should we use, how can we make this look better. They're helping us on professionalism. I mean, we use the Alexa, you know, after you guys shot, I still, you know, I can only imagine on that. We used it for Overcomer. At the same time, sometimes they'll come to us and say, hey, what about this on the ministry side? And so we're glad to pour into them. It's a, We love these guys and are cheering them on. So. Well, I appreciate that, guys. You know, we feel like, you know, iron sharpens iron, and you, you, uh, you and Alex have been big brothers to us, um, especially uh, spiritually on this journey, because we came into this uh, just as, as filmmakers that kind of stumbled into the opportunity to have an impact. Uh, it was on y'all set for Courageous that you first challenged my brother to find his purpose and his calling. And, and, and so I think that we both stepped into that with a lot of fear and trepidation because you guys are pastors, you know this world very well, and we're Christians and we, we, be- we belong to Jesus Christ for the majority of our life, but I think this platform of how to use it for the gospel was something that we were nervous about at first, and so yeah. along the way, in the growing pains that we've had of trying to understand what it means to be a steward of any kind of platform, you guys have been a voice of truth in our lives, and mm. have been with us even through the rough patches, uh, and, and we're really, really grateful and humbled by that, and, and we've tried to emulate uh, how you guys have modeled it well, and so uh, we're grateful to be on this journey with you. And Man, see thank you. Whatever God does. Thank well, thank listen, you uh, we do, we also want to thank you for this incredible cutting edge technology of doing a. <laughs> I'm amazed good, at how good he looks. But look, but this look, is so impressive to me. I need to have a call after this about cutting edge technology for the future of uh, FaceTime. Events, right, that's but, right. Uh, well, see, we're doing a FaceTime live on a Facebook live yeah. at the same time. <laughs> Maybe you're ahead of the curve. Yeah, Maybe. that's right. They're right. Well, hey, good, great to talk to you, Andy. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. We love you guys. Talk All to right, you. thank you. Hey, guys, I, I want you all to see this trailer for I Still Believe. We queued this up real quick. And do you have the one that's the parenting one? Okay, yeah. Watch this trailer. They, they This is a little post that they just put connected to the film that's pretty cool. Dad, what am I supposed to do? I don't know the answers to your questions, but I do know this, that my life is not full in spite of the disappointments. It's full because of them. You chose willingly to walk into the fire with her, right beside her. That's what love is. And I got to watch my son do that. I'm proud of you. I love you, Dad. Who's had 32 number one radio singles, four gold records, 4.5 million albums sold. Let's welcome my friend Jeremy Camp. I still believe. Yeah, one of the things I love about that film, it's so beautifully shot it and is. well done. 
very, very professional. And that whole message of train up a child in the way he should go, the Irwins were greatly impacted by their dad, and they made the movie Woodlawn because their dad was the speaker who went in and helped bring about that revival in the school at Woodlawn. But secondly, they have uh, a love for their own kids and are pouring into their own kids, which we do as well with our That's kids, right. Alex. We're, we're really big on yes. fatherhood and parenting. So, All right, I want to shift gears real quick, share some quick good news with you, and then we're going to have a prayer time. The first good news is that the book Defined, which is about identity in Christ that we talked about in the movie Overcomer, as you know, War Room, this call to prayer, Let's see where it is. War Room, this call to prayer uh, right now would be a great movie to watch because it reminds us we need to be seeking the Lord at this time. But Overcomer focuses in on Defined, and we unpack the, the, the book Ephesians and Scripture and talk about being strong in the Lord when, when under attack. And so uh, I want to encourage you, if you haven't checked out the book, to check it out. We've been working with Lifeway on this, and Lifeway has recommended and is encouraging people to launch a defined book club, a great thing to be doing while you're at home right now. You can launch a Facebook group. You can launch an Instagram group. Or you can launch it uh, just using Zoom and texting out to your friends saying, hey, you want to read a book about identity in Christ and us remember during this testing time who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, the access we have to the Father during this time to remember we're loved and chosen and forgiven and adopted and all the resources we have in him. Secondly... Lifeway is discounting this book yeah. from twenty three ninety nine right now because of all that's going on with the coronavirus down to four ninety nine, and so if you we're going to put a link on, in the comment section here that you can click on, but if you go to Amazon, it's fourteen ninety I think, yeah. and uh, and it's doing really good the reviews. But we want to bless you and encourage you. Lifeway has set all this up. So if you click on the link in the comment section, you can get this for $4.99 and start a book club with your friends, study identity in Christ, set up Zoom talks or Facebook time talks, and, uh, and then interact and talk about what you're learning as you're reading through the book. But we hope that will be a blessing to you, a gift to you. Uh, that's not about profitability. It's about spiritual fruitfulness for the kingdom long term. So That's right. So, again, we're going we're gonna to jump into a time of prayer now, and we want to pray for our country. We want to pray for our leaders, from the president to your governor to the mayors, uh, all those in authority, that God would continue to guide them. But yes. not just that we would get through this but that we would get closer to the Lord through this yes. and that he would be glorified and he would change lives. So. so would you join us in prayer? It says in scripture, if two or more of you shall agree as touching anything, when Jesus said that in Matthew 18, that word for agree means to make a harmonious symphony. It means you're playing your one instrument, you're seeking God using your background, your spiritual gift, your passions, and we're in agreement and we're praying for the same thing, saying yes and amen in our hearts. And so Alex and I are going to pray back and forth and pray for you, pray for our nation, pray for the churches, and ask God to advance his kingdom. And secondly, we we want to encourage you to initiate prayer at this time. Yeah. Do it at home with your families saying, hey, let's pray about this. Or we just heard so-and-so lost their job. Let's pray about this. We heard so and so is in the hospital right now. Let's stop right now and pray for this. Secondly, to do that with your church, online, community, with your family, your friends. Anytime believers hear about a need or a crisis, it's not a time to gossip or worry. It's a time to to go to intercede on behalf of other people. So we want to encourage you to be initiating prayer in all of your circles of influence right now, regardless of where it is. And and sometimes when we're squeezed, uh, what matters most will come to the top. And yes. so now is not a time to uh, be looking to ourselves or, or to just how to entertain ourselves. We want to edify each other. We want to pray for one another. And again, we want to turn to the Lord during these types of seasons mm that uh, he would be pleased and glorified. And, and, and we all hope that this ends sooner rather than later. Yes. But, uh, but again, if we're walking with the Lord and we're depending on him, then uh, this, is, this is very tolerable. We, we, can, we can get through this together. Mm. All right? Let's pray. You want to start? Yep. Lord Jesus, we want to come to you first recognizing that you are on mm. the throne and you have never left the throne, Lord. Right. We, we are grateful and thank you for the incredible Lord and Savior that you are. And Lord, we would ask that you use this time, and, and, and you know how long it will last. You know those that will be most uh, affected by it. 
And God, we are asking that you would turn the heart of our nation to you, that you would use this not only to um, uh, cause us to wake up, but Lord, sometimes you, you can put the brakes on and we come to a screeching halt and we're looking around at each other going, what's going to happen? But Lord, uh, fear does not rule the day. You are in charge. And so we look to you. Mm. Lord, we ask you for wisdom and discernment for all of our leaders, yes. from our president yes. to those in authority and the government, to our governors, local government, to our mayor and and, uh, and those in authority over us. We ask for wisdom and discernment for all doctors in the medical field, Lord, that you would provide what they need. Yes. And, and th- that all those that need treatment would be treated, but Lord, not just to get better, not that we can just resume our lives as they were, mm. but Lord, that we can resume our lives with a greater depth of devotion to you, a dependence on you, yes. um, uh, seeking you, Uh, and walking with you, God. And so we ask that in some ways this will be a breaking for people. And Lord, may good come out of it. May may, uh, the evil stop. Uh, Lord, may may we throw off things that are displeasing to you, mm-hmm. and may we take stock of where we are first spiritually, and secondly with our with our needed relationships. Lord, may marriages get closer, may may families get closer, and may you provide for for the needs of of everyone, especially that's seeking you. And Lord, mm-hmm. for those that are not, may those in the church, may believers, reach out and extend. Um, help and, and uh, gracious support of those that need it so that they would be drawn to you. Yes. And so, Lord, we thank you and praise you for, for what you're already doing, even the good reports we're already hearing yes. of, of families spending time together, even reconciliations happening. And, Lord, may you get the glory for all of this. Yes, Lord, your word says that we should be anxious for nothing, that there's not even one thing that we should be worried about. And you said, but instead, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And so, Lord, with thanksgiving, first, we thank you for being good, for being sovereign, for being on the throne. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness in the past. Lord, when we read your word, anytime there was a famine or a crisis, you were at work bringing good out of it. Lord, uh, when Joseph's in jail, Lord, you are still at work Mm -hmm. when he's there at that time. Anytime there was a famine in the land, Lord, you were constantly drawing people to yourself, calling them to repentance, helping them to seek your face. And so, Lord, we pray that you would around the world continue to hear the prayers of your children. Lord, as we have been praying for revival among the nations, for the gospel to go to the ends of the earth, Lord, we pray, Father, that you would awaken people who've been resistant to the gospel, Mm -hmm. who've been resistant to Jesus, who've been prideful, who've been resistant to your word, resistant to your uh, sovereignty, your control. Lord, we pray you'd humble them. We pray that you would open their eyes to the truth of the gospel. And Lord, would you send them uh, the truth of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, and that through repentance and faith in him, they can have eternal life, they can have forgiveness, they can have freedom, they can have hope, uh, they can have a relationship with you. Lord, we thank you of who we become in Jesus when we place our faith in you, that you do forgive us of all of our sins uh, because of what Christ did on the cross. Lord, you do adopt us into your family and love us unconditionally. You do seal us with the with your Holy Spirit and empower mm-hmm. us to live out the Christian life. And Lord, even as Jesus said, my peace I leave with you, yes. not as the world gives, do I leave it. Let not your heart be troubled or be fearful. Uh, I pray, Father, we would remember the word of God, that we should never be fearful. The only thing we should be afraid of is you in a, in a respectful awe because you are in control and you hold eternity in your hands. So, Lord, I pray you would remind people, remind believers around the world that you are answering their prayers, that they've Mm. prayed in the past for you to to free them up of things they don't need to be doing, to make them more like Jesus, to connect them well with their families, their friends, their children, to humble them, to to call them to repentance and revival, to, to set them free from bondage and addictions that are in their lives. And right now, you're answering those prayers. You're giving them an opportunity to seek your face. And Lord, at the same time, we've prayed for unity in the church, unity amongst Mm -hmm. the nominations, unity amongst races. And Lord, right now, you're forcing us to humble ourselves and to reach out in love and in dependence upon one another. And Lord, your word says we should pray for those that are in authority over us. So Lord, we pray for every government official from the the top with the president, 
the Supreme Court, uh, with the House, the Congress, uh, the Vice President, with the cabinets, all the advisors that are there in Washington, D.C. and America, Lord, and around the world, the government leaders in every country, Lord, would you be ordering their steps, giving them wisdom, guiding their decisions. I pray they would make decisions based upon what is in the best interest of the people, not just their own best interest. Mm. And Lord, I pray they'd be servant-hearted leaders, that they would begin to cry out to you and call upon your name for wisdom, and you would give it to them. Lord, we also pray for our church leaders, for every pastor, every ministry leader, that they would rise up with strength and not fear at this time. Lord, that they would be seeking your face, that you would guide how they should spiritually shepherd their people on a spiritual level through prayers and the ministry of your word, on a physical level as they engage their churches, Mm. serving one another, supporting, praying for one another, fellowshipping together, rejoicing, weeping together, comforting one another. And Lord, we also pray for the employers, the business leaders, uh, so many people uh, are are under the authority of a business leader or a boss. Mm. And Lord, we pray right now you'd be guiding the decisions of those employers and those business leaders. You'd be freeing them up of unnecessary expenses. You'd be showing them mercy with debts and rents and ongoing bills that are coming in, that you would help them to stretch out the resources they have, and you'd help them to know what to do with their employees, when they need to let someone go, when they need to stretch out what they have. Father, we pray that you would use all of this for good in the lives of all of our leaders. And Lord, we pray for every believer, that every believer would humble themselves and seek your face personally, that they would cry out to you specifically, that they would lead their families in prayer, that you would guide them, that they would read your word like never before, that they would seek your face like never before, that they would humble themselves like never before. And Lord, I pray you'd give us spiritual eyes, that we would view our circumstances through the lens of the Great Commission, through the lens of eternity, through the lens of not why are you allowing this to happen to me, but Lord, how are you going to be making me more like Jesus through this? How are you calling me to be the hands and feet of Jesus through all of this? How are you advancing your kingdom through this? How do you want me to honor you in this circumstance? Lord, I pray that we would have spiritual eyes to view everything we're going through, through the lens of your word and through the Holy Spirit's guidance. This Lord, we ask for strengthening by the power of your Holy Spirit, Mm -hmm. hope by the power of your Holy Spirit, faith by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray that we would see the answers to our prayers and remember that you promised you would meet our needs according to your riches and glory. So Lord, I ask for creativity, a creativity with leaders, creativity with believers, creativity as to how to expand their resources, what they need to do with the influence you've given them, creativity concerning how to get uh, income when they don't have it from the from their traditional sources. Lord, I pray for creativity for the church and for leaders uh, to help us to solve problems and network together. And Lord, we also Mm. pray for a solution to the coronavirus. We pray for... Uh, for you to to develop the vaccines, to develop the medicines. Yes, Let there be breakthroughs, Lord. We ask and agree right now in Jesus' name mm. that there will be breakthroughs around the world in the medical community, in the research side of things, Lord, that there will be breakthroughs in avoiding the virus and in treating the virus. And I pray, Father, for patience and endurance in the meantime and for, for the entire world uh, to be called back to you through all of this. So we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name and the strong Son of God. Amen. 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 Hey, we're just reminding you, uh, even though we're praying for our leaders, our hope is not in mankind. Our hope is in the Lord. That's right. So love God. Ask him to teach you whatever he wants to teach you during this time, and may your heart be tender toward him. And, uh, and we hope to talk to you again soon. Yes. God bless. Take God bless. Care.